the sent men, sentiment, sentimental men. <laughs> it's such a Monday. <laughs> yeah. Folks, um, how are you? How are you guys doing? I'm good. I'm so excited to be on the vlogs. I know this is so fun. <laughs> um, so if you don't know who the sent men are, you guys are a fun little podcast all about the one and only Wicked <laughs> little show that's on Broadway. If you haven't heard of it, you should check it out. It's really underground. Um, <laughs> a little show. Just a little itty bitty show. Um, so my first, I first want to know, like, for those who haven't listened to the podcast, what, why did the podcast like start? Like, what were you just kind of like, oh my God, Wicked, oh my God, podcast, <laughs> perfect pairing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Kevin and I know each other because I interned for Kevin years ago at this point um, yeah. at a theater company in New York. Do you want to take it, Kevin? I feel like we can popcorn. Oh, yeah, sure. So um, we knew each other because we were, as Quincy said, former co-workers. Um, and we are a rare example of co-workers that uh, I think really stayed friends after we no longer work together. So we were in touch always, but uh, into the pandemic. Um, and one day, Quincy texted me and he had this great idea <laughs> Well, it's because like our friendship has, I mean, oh, the whole story. Okay, well, no, sure, sure, I just sure. feel like we would always text each other about like the niches musical theater things. And, it, and so over the pandemic, you know, when life was especially mundane and boring, you mm -hmm. know, I were just like throwing all these like niche, like wicked thoughts and musical theater thoughts at each other. And then one day I texted him something super wicked niche. I don't remember what it was at this point. Well, so okay if we're going in depth with the story yeah. <laughs> so first I had texted you this like Venn diagram with three circles oh, that's right. and I was like I feel like we should fill this in with like alphabas who are the best at the wizard and I alphabas who are best at defying gravity alphabas who are best at no good deed and then like I forgot about yeah so we kind of like, talked about that idea first and then you texted me a couple weeks later like it was Steph it was something about something Stephanie about J. Stephanie J. Block. <laughs> and huge, naturally, right? naturally, naturally. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of you texted yeah, me. Yeah, like that, texted that. you, and then he responded as if it was a normal text. And it really wasn't a normal text. Like it was such a bizarre thing to say. And then in that moment, I was like, wow, it's so nice that I have a person in this world that I can like text these crazy things to, and it's just like normal and we can like, and he gets it. And yeah. so I kind of jokingly said, Kevin, we should start a podcast where we interview Alpha Buzz. And then- yeah. And I didn't take it as a joke. And now yeah. a year and a half later, here we are. Well, I'm glad you didn't take it as a joke because I listen to it all the time. <laughs> oh um, and um, it's nice to know that I am not the only person who like obsesses over Wicked. Cause- Yeah, my God. Well, that's been the craziest thing is like realizing how many people there are who are so into it in the way that we are so into it because I always felt like I was kind of weird for like being so <laughs> niche about it you know but no there's a ton of people <laughs> yeah so tell me about the first time the two of you saw the show and why did oh. it, what, what about it were you like this is it so I uh saw the show for the first time um in December no I'm sorry November November December of 2004 so most of the original cast had left but Adina was still in the company and it was like I want to say like two or three weeks before she got hurt so it was like right at the end of her run which was super exciting to me because I obviously was obsessed with the cast recording. Um, and then uh, Jennifer Laura Thompson would have been my Glinda, but um, this bright, bushy-tailed, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young standby named Megan Hilty was on instead. Um, and I remember being so upset that I wasn't seeing Jennifer Laura Thompson because I had become a fan of hers like through bootlegs or whatever. Um, 
And then I remember absorbing Megan Hilty's performance and being like, wow, that was so good. And so that was kind of like my first experience of like kind of a, a standby, like, you know, show saving moment. And so like, that was really exciting to me. Um, and I, but I think like what sealed the deal with Wicked in that, in seeing that performance was that I had obviously been listening to the cast recording for months and months and months. And it was the first time that like what I was picturing in my head when I was listening was surpassed by what the reality was. Like my, it, like my imagination wasn't big enough to, to come up with Wicked. And so it just felt so like, grand in that way and then it was just eight you know 17 years of spiraling after that the rest is history yeah um my first time well so mine's is weird because I grew up in Hawaii and Broadway tours like don't really go to Hawaii we get Phantom and Cats but not necessarily like the newer shows which I guess Wicked was and kind of still is in that regard um, so by the time I saw Wicked for the first time, I think in 2012, when the tour finally came to Hawaii. And at that point, I had already like had the show memorized, been trading bootlegs. I had my bootleg site. I had been writing fan mail to all the alphabas and everything, having never seen the show. Like I literally like my experience with Wicked was bootlegs for like the first five years of me loving it. Um, but then when the tour was finally coming, we found out like a year in advance that that was coming. And what, what math are you crunching right now, Kevin? <laughs> um, so yeah, we found out like a year in advance that it was coming. I was so excited. I was like Wicked's personal press publicist in Hawaii. Um, and I was also, the school I was at had a pretty good theater program. So I got to perform with Carla Stickler, who was the Alphabet standby on tour and Michael Mahaney, who was the Fiero understudy. We got to like do a concert with them at the community theater in Hawaii before Wicked came, which was like crazy cool experience. And I'd also like written fan mail to Carla before. So it was like this crazy moment. Um, but then, yeah, it was D. Rossioli, Patty Mirren and Clifton Hall as Fiero, who also grew up in Hawaii. So that was like a really cool thing. And I saw the tour six times while it was stationed there. Um, and it was really cool because Hawaii's like the theater culture isn't that big of a thing. So no one knew about the lottery or anything. So essentially, if I went to the lottery, I was winning the lottery, you know, and like stage door wasn't a thing. So I was kind of the only person waiting outside. It was like a really special experience that very much felt for me because I was like, I don't know how many actual crazy wicked stands there are on this island here. <laughs> That's so fun. I um, I saw Wicked like like right in between when you all saw Wicked. I think it was like 2007, 2008. Um, Who was your pair? Um, I think it was, oh my God, I actually don't even know who my Glenda was. But my alphabet was Carmen Cusack. I know that. Okay. Was it Katie Rose Clark? Oh, yes. Yeah, that sounds right. That feels right. Yes. What's upsetting is like back then I didn't save my programs. I was like, it's just a piece of paper. So mm, I didn't yeah. save them. That's why I feel grateful that I saw Wicked after I'd kind of already grown into like a theater fanatic because I knew like to save everything and get everything signed yeah. and like right. really take it all in. <laughs> well, and I was, I was seven at the time. So like- yeah. Wicked, like yeah. I had no idea what was happening. I think my first Broadway mu Broadway touring musical was like The Lion King. Um, I think and I that was mine too. Something for a really long time. That was mine. Oh, Cats was the very first that Broadway show I ever saw. Yeah, that does track, doesn't it? <laughs> but I'm sure, like the two of you, uh, the magic of it and the experience that you get with Wicked is really what pulled me in. Although I do remember someone um, like scanned a CD for me mm -hmm. on this and they were like, I made it green and black just for you because that's <gasps> oh, that's, yeah, that's a amazing. good friend. CD with like green and black and then they had a green Sharpie and they wrote Wicked on it. I have no idea yeah. what CD is anymore. It probably doesn't work anymore. But I uh, my that's mom amazing. 
my mom got it and she was like we're going to see this musical it's like really big it's gonna be mm-hmm. great I think you're gonna love it because you like the Wizard of Oz and da 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 mm-hmm. and yeah. she turned on the first song in the car and I immediately was like turn it off <gasps> because it scared me it's <laughs> bombastic oh my gosh. yeah it yeah was sure a really big start and I lit I was terrified and I didn't listen that to makes it. sense and then the week later we went to go see it and I was like just um, maybe I do like this show. Um, and I think yeah. I saw the tour like every year for the next like five years. <laughs> like yeah. Wicked, like Wicked is the biggest show that comes to Charlotte, period. They come okay. every year. Mm. It's like a huge deal. And it's gotten bigger as time goes on. And then of course yeah. bootlegs are what got me through the rest of the year when they weren't there. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I like vividly remember watching Carmen and Kate, uh, uh, Carrie Ellis, their mm-hmm. bootlegs. I remember watching their Defying Gravity. It's like, yeah, Carrie's was a big bootleg for me. I would say like the defining bootlegs when I was younger was Carrie Ellis on Broadway, Stephanie J. Block and Annalie Ashford. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say those two were the ones that I probably watched the most like as a kid. That yeah. I based my wicked knowledge on. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of fan theories and questions, yes. I'm going to go to the Instagrams and see what mm-hmm. people have asked. Okay. Fun. I meant to look at this post before so I could be prepared, but I didn't. Yeah, so this is coming in hot. This is yeah. like, Yikes. okay, great, great, great. Um, someone says, are you a no one warns? A popular or a thank goodness, Glenda. Have we talked about this on pod? I can't remember. I think we did once a long time ago. Okay, I don't remember. You can go first, Glenda girl. Um, I think, and I remember we disagreed about this last time, Quincy, but I like to oh, think oh. of myself as a popular Glenda. But I believe right. Quincy thinks of me as a thank goodness Glinda, right? Well, I think of myself as a thank goodness Glinda. Or maybe I, you thought of me as no one mourns the, uh, no one mourns the wicked Glinda. Okay, I don't know what I said on pod, so don't clock me if this is wrong, but I'm gonna right now say <laughs> that I put you as a no one mourns the wicked Glinda because I think you would be a Glinda. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think you would be a real try hard Glinda and you would be really, <laughs> <laughs> trying to show off your vocals okay and that you have the notes in that song a hundred percent yes <laughs> it's very that i think we both give adequate populars like we are both capable of putting on a good popular but you mm-hmm. would be a no one wears the wicked and i think i would be a thank goodness just because the acting okay. seems easy in that <laughs> i feel like only knowing you for a few minutes now that still tracks in my mind Cute. okay Ooh, good. good 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 <laughs> What about you? What do you think? Are you a... Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Since you're a Wicked Sand, you have to answer all these questions. I, okay. We... Okay. I feel like I'm a thank goodness, Glenda. Okay. Just because though I am a Soprano, I am mm. not that kind of a Soprano. Okay. And so mm-hmm. I feel like I would give a good, like, belty Glenda moment. Yes. With okay. thank goodness. With that, like, little moment. That's, yeah. that's right there. That's what feels right. I feel like I'm not funny enough for popular. <laughs> so I would just be like, we're just Well, I feel like popular else. is so funny just like on the page. On that the all page, you have to do right. is like, you know, uh, anything this. extra is extra. Speaking of popular. Yes. Can we talk about Alex yes. Newell? Oh, oh sure. my God. As Glinda, because I want to see it. Well, first of I all, that whole it. concert I don't know what I was expecting, but it was so much better. And I'm glad we're talking about it now because we just recorded an episode and didn't talk about this concert. Um, but it was so much better than anything I was expecting it to be. It was so good. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I need Ariana DeBose as Elphaba. Yes. Isaac Powell as Fierro. Oh, Ugh. I was blown away. Yeah. But yeah. also like, I just need to see him in the Fierro pants. That's, yes. Mm, yes that's that yes. whole thing too someone yeah. on tiktok said that he sounds a lot like norbert and i agree and i think that's part of the magic of it it's so yeah. good. i think he that's sounds like norbert in like a new and defined way 
Mm-hmm. Like modern Norbert. Yeah. Yeah. It's the vibrato though. It's the mm. I mean, I love his voice. It's so good. Cleanness yeah. of it. Yeah. Someone wants to know if you're ready for the movie. <laughs> we are finally getting <laughs> after <laughs> <laughs> Many years we have waited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for it. I'm open to it and I'm accepting it into my life. I'm doing kind of like a protecting myself mentality where it's <laughs> like, I've been hearing about this movie since I was in high school and I'm not going to believe it's actually happening until I see a trailer, you mm-hmm. know? Right. Where it's like, there's no point in getting excited over these headlines after all these years of headlines saying the same thing, but different, you know? It's like, I'm just going to wait until I have concrete evidence that it's happening and then I'll be excited about it. Because that's another thing I have about the movie where it's like, I have a really hard time imagining what Wicked is going to look like on film. Like, it just like, Mm -hmm. I think because I'm so accustomed to the stage version and everything, I'm just having a really, really hard time imagining how they're going to translate all of it. Well, I feel like the stage version, the way they wrote it is Mm -hmm. so like through line, like everything kind of works into the next scene on stage. Whereas like in my mind, for example, like Dear Evan Hansen, Mm -hmm. the way that they've written it, the the scenelets of it, it makes sense for them to like cut to another. Does that make sense? Like that's interesting. That's interesting. That way, whereas like in my mind, the whole section from wizard into yeah, what is this feeling into? I like, guess the only major time difference is Act One, Act Two. Right. Which, that's interesting. That's a good point. Yeah. So that's like my thoughts. I'm also just not gonna put this in the video, but I'm also just hoping that James Corden is not in it. <laughs> oh <laughs> God. I feel like that's safe to put in the video. <laughs> Someone. Someone, I don't know what Instagram it is, but oh, I saw that. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh, on Dumois. No, no, I think, yeah, no. it, they posted that Dumois posted Corden was going to be in the movie as the wizard yeah. or Dr. Yeah. Dilliman. Listen, if he wants to be Dr. Dilliman, he can have it. No, <laughs> I don't want him anywhere near it. There are so few things that I love that he hasn't touched yet. That's the thing too. I'm going to out myself. I don't have this like immense hatred that all of the theater community seems to have against James Corden. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not like, I don't have strong feelings either way, but there's this hatred that I feel from people and I don't necessarily understand where it's coming from because I think he does a fine job in everything he does. Is that crazy to say on record? (laughs) (laughs) That is on record. It's like on recording (laughs) going in the books. Quincy. (laughs) You think like, he does a fine job in everything? The only... I the couldn't o- even go see Ocean's 8 without him showing up. Like, he's in everything. He's in everything. I'm so sick of him. But I'm like, <laughs> there's a reason he's in everything. They don't just cast people who don't have appeal. No, he's... he's like I don't know anyone because- who likes him. I think we're in a very loud microchasm, is what I'm going to say. And I sure. think that, like, general America is probably just fine with James Corden. Sure. Right, correct. Maybe. I feel like my thing is, like, he's in things because he's producing it. Mm-hmm. Oh, sh- and I don't know the back end of any of that. That's like, true. the thing I about it is, like, that. Cinderella... Um, I loved it, so... <laughs> But he, like, was an exec producer of that movie. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Not to say that, like, the casting was, like, or, or whoever. No, no, I just no, feel I like it was, like, written in the contract, like... He's executive producer. That's also probably why we got Adina Menzel in Cinderella and Billy Porter. So we have to, like... I mean, <laughs> you're not He wrong. can spend his money however he wants. <laughs> I would just like to be able to watch something with music in it without having him be a part of it. <laughs> right. I liked him as the baker. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. I didn't expect to come here and defend James Corden. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Someone says, if you could turn back time, if you could turn if back I could time, turn back time. Uh-huh. Um, and be at any performance of Wicked oh. in history, mm. which would you choose? Can we remove the original cast out of this question? Because I feel like that is that just has to be the answer if they're in the equation. Yeah. 
Okay. Like in general, that's a given, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I think it's SJB's last. Okay. I think that's, that was my first thought and I'm sticking to it. Mm-hmm. I want to see, oh, so I was well, gonna, I did just think of a good, can, can we give our SJB answer and then give another answer? Or just like, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I would want to see not SJB's last on Broadway. I want to see SJB second month on tour. Because I think Stephanie J. Block on the Wicked Purse National Tour, she's great on Broadway, but there's su- there's like magic in the way she is on tour. How about SJB and Sebastian the night that they got married and didn't tell anybody? Sure. I was just about to say that. That would be... Sure. To watch that performance knowing that would be yeah. very fun. My other answer after SJB would be Julia Murney and Kendra Kassebaum. Yes four months into the tour. I love that. I love that era of the first national tour. I really, really do. Mm-hmm. I feel My, like, go ahead, oh, go ahead. I feel like the Stephanie and Sebastian is like, that was one of, that was my first thought. Yeah. yeah. Honest. No, that's that a good one. one. And then That'd be a great show. Jessica Vosk's last. Oh, sure. sure. My non SJB answer is Shoshana Bean the no fly show where she did like all of that (laughs) sure yeah yeah yeah. to be there to see her come up with that on the spot i fell down a golden age spiral last night i was just watching eden shoshana adina sjb videos and it was the first time in a while that i've actually like sat down and been like i'm gonna watch this bootleg and it was so nice (laughs) yes no but you've seen there's like this one well, I think it's gone now, which is upsetting. But there was one like pristine SJB Sebastian as long as your mind video. Oh, I know it. It's gone. And it's gone. I probably and have it, it on a hard drive somewhere. Makes <laughs> me so sad. My friend Tyler and I used to talk about that video specifically all the time because she would kiss his fingers while he was singing his verse. Yes. And we were like, what? is this it's amazing yeah. that oof, and <laughs> and her for the first time i feel wicked i was like that is the that is like that's it that's, that's, it. that's how you read that line yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, i like this one cast your dream gender bent wicked oh my god wow that's, that's so hard i know that is really hard i don't even know if i could actually do that i feel like i don't know enough names <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like Alphaba has to be anyone who's played Elder Price. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. What would you do? I'm going to I'm going to invoke the time machine rule because it's too much to try to come up with like age appropriate people for yeah. this. I'm going to say for Alphaba. So curious to see where you go with this cuz I have no idea. I know this is for Alphaba, I'm gonna say Michael Kilgore. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Original key mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like that's the kind I want that kind of like acrobatic voice sure. on Alphaba. This is so hard. And then <laughs> this is this is a great question, whoever asked this. Give me. <laughs> Jackie Hoffman as the wizard. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'll take I feel that. like that could work. I'll take that. <laughs> um, it would be like um, like Christopher Sieber as Madam Master Morrible. Master Morrible. <laughs> you know who I think? Okay, this might throw you for a loop. I think Glinda, a good Glinda. Mm-hmm. could be Alex Brightman because I think he has comedy chops that we don't oh. give him enough credit for and the voice is insane he could also be an alphabet actually he could Louise Dierman he, it he could Louise Dierman <laughs> it yeah wow that's a really interesting idea is that cheating because he was a Bach I just remembered that 
Okay, wait, now I have to think of a, a good Glinda. The Bach, the Bach with no pants. The Bach with no pants. Claire, do you have anything? Yeah, what are, what are your thoughts? I, like, weirdly want to see Jen Colella's wizard. Jen Colella's Fiero yes. would be hot. Ooh. That's yeah. nice. Yes. I love- At the moment, like, her name is popping up in my brain. Sure. Difficult question. It's very hard. Whoever asked this, good one. This is like, I need to like, think about it and come back to you with the list kind of a thing though. <laughs> I know, I'm you really- You have a week to turn it into me. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've also like immediately forgotten every human that's ever been that's on ever stage. That's ever been on and stage. Their, and their I know. voices. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like People. if I'm casting a man, uh, a man as Glinda the way I would want a woman cast as Glinda and like prioritizing the voice and prioritizing like the legit voice that can then stylize into the other parts of the show. Mm-hmm. The names that come to mind are like your Aaron Tveits, your like- right. um, What about Gavin Creel? Oh, that's Wait. a he could that's sell a, Glinda. He could Who? sell Glinda. Why can't I think of his name? Who originated Hans on Cosentino? No, on no. Broadway. It was um not Oh, John Riddle. Oh my god. Yes, John Riddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Riddle would be a good Glinda. I feel like he has the like his falsetto is just Mm-hmm. He has a gorgeous mm-hmm. voice. Delicious. Mm-hmm. I feel like he'd be a really good Glinda. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is such a fun question. I'm going to be thinking about this for days. Like, Kevin will have a list. It's going to be like Thursday at two in the morning, and I'm going to be texting Quincy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So then also, I want to know if you could oh, cast God. someone as yeah. elf, like not gender bent, but like. Yeah. I feel like I, well, I think Soleil Pfeiffer would be a great alpha. Mm-hmm. I think she'd be so, so good. Mm-hmm. She, I mean, honestly, she'd be a great Glinda too. Like she's sure. she's somebody with like okay. a, a, such a versatile voice like that. I kind of feel the same way about Taylor Louderman where it's like, I feel like she would get put into the Glinda track mm-hmm. because of everything. But I also think like her belt is so nasty and in like a good way and like pinny yeah. and nasally mm-hmm. that would like sound really good on the Elphaba songs. I will say it's hard because they're, I feel like the Elphabas of the world get to make themselves known a little bit more. Like nobody sings like Glinda in other right. shows. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. cause like the, the only person that comes to mind is like Brittany Johnson, but that's cheating because like I've seen her do the role, but. <laughs> I think well, Ashley on the Mean Girls train. I think Ashley Park could do Glinda. Ashley Park could do a yeah. great Glinda. Yeah, yeah. That's I haven't really... heard Brittany Mac sing in the like Glinda mm. realm, but according uh-huh. to the other queens, she could like fully do Christy. That's Pye. super interesting, and I would love to hear it. Mm. I think but Sam then... Pauly would be a great Alphaba. Yes. Yeah, she would be. The Evita into the Alphaba track. The Evita to Alphabet Pipeline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also, um, I mean, I want to see Alyssa Ray as Alphaba. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think she would like kill that. And I think in a few years, Sean Allen Krill would be a great wizard. <laughs> We're putting him at wizard status. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Sean yeah. Allen Krill. <laughs> I think he maybe has like a decade in him. I know. <laughs> he's got yeah. like a, he's got a while, but I do think he would That's sound great, really good on those. Yeah. Songs. I would love to see him as, and in, then he can go in as the wizard when Cheno's going in as Morbel. As Morbel, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I also want to ask you about this German production. What are your thoughts on, on this oh new goodness. version uh, of Wicked? I think it's really cool um especially because i like i think the broadway design of wicked is or the i should say the original design of wicked is always going to be like what's in our memories the same way that like 
if I say a chorus line, we all just got the same mental image. Mm -hmm. If I say next to normal, we all just got the same mental image. Like it's Good iconic examples, for Kevin. a reason. Thank you so much. Um, but, um, but it's cool that like while this original production is still running, that we have another professional production to compare it to right. mm -hmm. is is so like rare and weird and and cool that we even have this chance mm -hmm. um and i think like huge hats off to the design team over there because it is so different there's no there's there's no connection and that's really hard to do i would imagine um so that's how i feel about it from like a production point of view i I think there's a lot of really exciting things about it. I think like the way the flying looks, and that's why I really want to see it in it looks person. Really cool. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know how much of that is like the CGI in the trailer, and how much of that is like what it probably actually looks like. You know? Right. But I think the flying looks amazing. I think Fierro is so hot in it, <laughs> and the costumes are so cool. I I had an issue with. I think it was Glinda's costumes and Alphaba's costumes. And mostly yeah. Glinda's costumes that I was like, I don't know what's going on here. I'm more curious as to like how slash why this production got greenlit to happen. Yeah, I would right. love to know the story. It feels very interesting that Wicked would let that happen. Right. 20 years into the... Yeah. They're, they're like now yeah. like, yeah, sure. I felt yeah, like go for it. Some of, the, some of it felt... I mean, it lo it looks really cool. I feel like with Glinda and that whole dancing through life section, mm -hmm. just seeing it looked like Mean Girls to me. Mm -hmm. Looks very oh, like high school because I yeah. I think it's like they're you're there like in a cafeteria mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. type thing. Well, Not that colleges don't have cafeterias. It's just yeah. like it just seemed a little. Well, that's kind of something that we were just talking about having seen. Wicked on Broadway, just this new cast where it's like this cast uh, reads pretty young on stage. And it was the first time watching it where I was like, oh, this mm -hmm. is, these people are in college. Like, I kind of think I forget when I watch Wicked that the first act, at least they're in college. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the juvenilization of it is proper for the text. Yeah. Right. I do think too, something that's interesting that uh, kind of that what you said just reminded me of is like, Wicked original design Broadway is so rooted in being based on the Wizard of Oz movie. It's like, it has to be the 19 whatever's because that's right. what the movie is. And it ha and like Alphaba has to end up with this silhouette because that's how she ends up in the mm -hmm. movie. Whereas like the, the new German production feels like it just took the script as its own thing mm -hmm. and didn't worry about what comes after or before it in the lore of Oz. And oh, I think that's how, that's how you end up with these like contemporary cafeteria tables instead wonder, is of Wizard like, of Oz, like Is Wizard of Oz as big in like Germany? Like, is it a thing even I'm in sure Germany? It I, I mean, it's like a global phenomenon, right? It's like the most famous movie in the world. <laughs> in the same way where we were talking about like Cinderella, Andrew Lloyd Webber Cinderella, where in America, it feels like we're getting Cinderella like adaptations every other day. But I was like, is it a thing on the West End? Like in the UK, is Cinderella as big mm. of a story as it is in America, you know? Yeah. Like are they oversaturated with it? I wonder if The Wizard of Oz for other, any any anywhere else other than America is like, a, a standard yeah yeah america like for american movies just it does of, feel like, inherently american i will say just like for what it is like one it being like the first in color and like mm -hmm. that history of tv film that mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah that it just might not be a movie. reference for them yeah I defer to Kevin because I feel like Kevin is the one who probably I has. mean it's interesting because my instinct would be that like like I think the Wizard of Oz is a very like world Universal. wide beloved movie mm -hmm. but it's in very interesting to me that you both feel like it is like a specifically American thing not specifically just like Mostly. a bigger deal to Americans than it is to the rest of the world 
Mm, yeah. That's interesting. Because in addition to like it having people like Judy Garland in the movie, mm -hmm. just because she, you know she was like an American acting yeah. icon yeah. legend, you know, compared to yeah. others. Not that you know. I don't know. I trust Kevin's opinion on this one. <laughs> <laughs> So you have a new season coming out soon. <gasps> we sure do. Yeah. What are what are, are can you like spill some tea about it? Was there like, spill anything some tea. exciting? I think so. <laughs> I, think I think so. So the idea for this season. <laughs> Or this cluster of episodes, I should call it. Yeah, is we're we, trying not to do seasons anymore. We want because that's are a lot of pressure. <laughs> that's a commitment for like eighteen episodes that I just can't make anymore. The way I say is like Ariana Grande had a moment during her Thank You Next era where she was like, male rappers get to drop music whenever they want. They don't have to build out a whole era and do an album and all this stuff. And it's like I want to enter a droplet era where we can just like release when we want to release and not feel pressured to be like, okay, we're on deck. For an episode every week for the next right. four months, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. That said, this season is about. <laughs> it started with we wanted to do um, something for because our podcast anniversary is the same day as the Wicked anniversary, um, and so we wanted to do a really cool episode for that. And then we were like, well, if we're gonna have this really great episode at the end of October, we should do a whole month of celebrating Wicked. So our first season was very like, I would say Elphaba focused. Mm -hmm. And this next little chunk is, I would say is more about the show than about Elphaba. Yeah, but we do have one. We do we have can, an Elphaba coming this. up. Yeah, we have an Elphaba interview scheduled that I think think a lot of people will be excited I know because she's been like our most requested guest so yeah. I'm excited that we're finally getting to do that and then we might have another interview with someone else that would also be very very exciting yeah so well <laughs> the tea may not be piping but <laughs> it's heating up it's I was gonna getting there it's, it's and getting truthfully there. like the reason why there's there's like nothing else to spill right now it's just like we are very fly by the seat of our pants and like whatever happens happens and right. we don't yeah. have enough of a plan right now right, so, right, right. <laughs> well yeah. i'm sure once everything drops everyone will be running to their to to their listening streaming services oh my goodness I sure hope so podcasts. i hope so um my last question, I do want to end on on something a little fun. Okay. Um, what is your favorite niche thing about Wicked? Okay, I have the first one that came to mind. Oh, I don't sure. know if that's the answer. Give me, I need 30 more seconds. Yeah. Can we just have a moment of silence to think about this really quick? <laughs> yeah, I'll like turn on the Jeopardy. Like, the yeah, yeah, song. yeah. Okay, you know, I have two answers. I have okay. a bootleg answer and a cast recording answer. So I'll go while Quincy thinks. Mm -hmm. So my bootleg answer is, and I actually owe this to Quincy because he's the one who showed it to me for the first time, is oh. Kristen Chenoweth, somewhere in the middle of her Broadway, her only run in Wicked, um, at the beginning of Defying Gravity, her line delivery of <laughs> Elfie, just say you're sorry. It is like the most flippant, aggressive line delivery of that I've ever heard. Dude, like I the think the best about, thing ever. Quincy, I think about that once a week. If like we can find the, the video, time, we'll say you're sorry. Here. It's so funny. Um, and my cast recording answer. Oh, this is nice. Both of my favorite niche things were gifted to me. Um, so Quincy gave me that that Christian channel with line delivery, and then our friend James, who was on our podcast pointed out to me once after I had been listening to the cast recording for two decades that underneath uh, Nessa's section of Dancing Through Life, there is the most beautiful flute solo you have ever heard. And I, I never heard it until he pointed it out to me. Like I, I never like absorbed it. And now I, I, I hear it only that every time I listen to that song. Mine's are uh, decidedly not as niche as Kevin's, but <laughs> the first one that came to my mind is I 
really, really love the section in Dancing Through Life when Glinda is giving off about the hat that it's really uh, sharp, don't you think? For whatever, like, I love, 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 love that. And I, mm-hmm. I think it's because I saw Patty Murin do it first live, I guess. And something about the way she's saying it, like, really stuck. And ever since then, like, I, that section is when I, like, I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention to the whole thing. But that's when I'm, like, sitting at the edge of my seat. And then I also really just love Wicked Witch of the East when Nessa gets belty. Mm. Because I feel like we all, we like don't give Nessa her flowers vocally. Mm -hmm. And like when Nessa wails on Wicked Witch of the East, it is good. Oh, absolutely. That was mine. Well, mine's kind of that, but also the harmonies that have been written with Elphaba singing. Oh, sure. Like towards the end. Specifically, uh-huh. um, alone and loveless here, like that mm-hmm. uh, small with the harmonies that she's singing, like back in the back, yeah, is yeah. like that one of, of like, my mm. favorite things. And I love just the score. And of course, like we don't, it's sadly not on the cast recording. I know everyone's really upset. Yeah, about that. <clears throat> when they do like a new cast recording, we'll get it. It better be on the movie soundtrack. That can you imagine? So? <laughs> yes, I can. It's a beautiful world. That you and I will be that. outside of Universal with the sun. Um, <laughs> with the like... uh, guy with a sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Put Wicked Witch in the East. On. I can tweet that to I'm me. tweeting that immediately. <laughs> But it's, it's the, there, there's like dissonance there, which I don't normally listen. Yeah. I don't normally hear because you're obviously like listening to Nessa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there is like, there are a few places where there are actual dissonance into the minor third or like. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite things. Yeah. I also will say that every time someone uses the word audacity, I can only think of you two. It's so funny that that became a thing. <laughs> Honestly, that's the whole podcast is worth it for the fact that, for that. <laughs> the audacity. Like the tweets the we see that are like, guys, someone in a meeting just said audacity. And I'm like, yeah, it's a word. Like, it's a word. <laughs> it's all I think of is just hearing Stephanie J. Block replaying. Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> when <laughs> when can we next hear when when can we hear you guys next? Um, well, Depending on when y'all are listening to this, um, our next new episode comes out um, this Friday, October 1st. Um, It's going to be a really fun episode, I think. Um, And then we'll be doing one episode a week for all five weeks of October. Oh, yes. Hustling. (laughs) Hustling. (laughs) (laughs) That is so exciting. And where can we find you on the interwebs mm. we're at sentmen pod on instagram and tiktok and twitter mm-hmm. is it three. sentmen pod on twitter mm-hmm. yeah cute yeah that's us <laughs> boom followed we'll throw everything i i say we like there's more than one person that works this thing <laughs> i will throw that down in the description box below well, uh, thank you. along with um Thanks. Some of my favorite podcasts that you've done, episodes that you've done. Honey. Well, thank you for sitting down and oh chatting gosh. with me all about yes. Wicked. I literally have no one except for Brie to talk like talk. Oh. So <laughs> it's nice to know that I have two other people who are yes. just as into um, the show. This was so thank fun. You. This was so you. fun. Amazing. Okay. And we'll see you on the interwebs. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs>